This video is brought to you by Zest Money. Visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to buy your favorite smartphone. It's an entirely digital process with high approval rates, seamless EMI payments, and even zero pre-closure charges. But the best part of all is the zero percent interest on most merchants, and you don't even need a credit card or a credit score either. Five years later, the journey that OnePlus embarked on to never settle has them positioning their phone as a flagship itself compared to the OG OnePlus One flagship killer. But at the very core, one thing that hasn't changed is the fact that OnePlus makes some of the fastest and best performing phones on the market. This is Sandeep from Rev Atlas. Let's see if the OnePlus 7 Pro abides by this or is an exception. Before we dive into the design, let's talk about the most important part of the phone first, the display. OnePlus users have had one main complaint about the screens and that was the resolution. This time around, OnePlus is bundling a 6.67 inch fluid AMOLED display with no notch, no display cutout just pure huge screen goodness and it looks amazing in the flesh. You also get 1440p of resolution and the icing on the cake is the 90hz refresh rate which coupled with the blazing performance is quite addictive. You sit and scroll through the app list or social media feeds just to see that happen. The colors are great, contrast is good too and sunlight legibility is excellent. The curved edges also feel nice and aren't too curved that it becomes a hindrance either. Sharpness is on point and even when you look up close, the density is still on point and tough to see the pixels. It's supposed DZI-P3 color gamut and comes with HDR10+, so watching any HDR-enabled content is a treat on this and OnePlus have also partnered with Netflix this time around. In terms of design, the 7 Pro is an evolution of previous devices. Essentially a Samsung-like approach with dual curve corning gorilla glass on both sides. It feels good to hold, but it's big. People with large hands such as myself may not find it that much of an issue, but for most it'll be a bit of a stretch. Even with the small bezels, the footprint is easily one of the biggest of any phone currently and many people would have problems finding a place in their pockets. The weight is also tipping the scales at 206 grams, but I didn't find it as much of an issue since the weight was pretty evenly distributed. OnePlus was able to achieve this all display front look with the help of a front facing pop-up camera that you can use even for face unlock. It works in 360 degrees and although it isn't quite as fast as the Vivo V15 Pro, which I couldn't compare side by side, but if my memory serves me right, the Vivo was still faster. Still OnePlus says that it has been stress tested to 300,000 times, which will last you over 16 years if you activate it 50 times daily or 5.5 years if you activate it 150 times daily. While those numbers don't mean much, the bottom line is that the device will probably outlast your usage plan unless you drop it somehow or damage it. Oh, and if you do happen to drop it, there's actually a failsafe that'll retract the module back in too, which is pretty neat. The fingerprint scanner is located below the display and I'm happy to say it's much faster than before, but still not as fast as traditional fingerprint scanners that we had on earlier OnePlus devices. Perhaps a few versions later we could match the speed, but right now it's not as fast. You can also choose the unlock animation and there's a small blue animation when the camera comes out for the face unlock as well. The 7 Pro comes preloaded with Oxygen OS and Android 9 Pie. Performance is super fluid and second to absolutely no other phone on the market. Coupled with the 90Hz screen, you'll be addicted to just scrolling around and if you happen to get the 12GB variant, you won't even notice if you have 20 odd apps running in the background. It's that powerful. Although 12GB RAM is probably overkill for many and I believe that the 8GB is a sweet spot in terms of pricing and performance. The Snapdragon 855 does well when it comes to gaming, multitasking and also is very energy efficient which we shall talk about later. The phone supports Camera 2 API out of the box as well as Widewine L1, which it should considering the Netflix partnership. There are three variants this time around, a 6 plus 128, 8 plus 256 and a 12 plus 256. Given the higher pricing which puts it in very close water to a Samsung and Huawei flagships, I was expecting a 12 plus 512 GB variant, especially since there's no memory expansion and only dual nano SIM support. Still, the only other device in India with 12 GB of RAM is the S10 plus 1 TB ceramic version that costs almost twice as much. The 7 Pro has a triple camera setup at the back which consists of three different focal lengths. The primary one is a half-inch Sony IMX586 48MP sensor mated to an f1.6 lens with OIS. You also get an 8MP telephoto camera with f2.4 aperture and OIS as well as an ultra-wide 16MP f2.2 camera with 0.6s magnification. Sure, this time around there are more cameras and more focal lengths to cover different fields of view, but speaking in terms of image quality itself, not much has changed for the better. We'll be doing an in-depth camera review so stay tuned for that, but these samples should give you an idea of what to expect.
Audio quality of the speakers are pretty good and you get stereo speakers this time around. There's barely any distortion even at peak volume and the output is very loud. No audio jack this time around too and unfortunately there's no dongle either. Quality of the wired route with the dongle is great and there's enough power to drive even more expensive headphones and earphones. In terms of battery capacity, the OnePlus 7 Pro has gotten a 300mAh bump to 4000mAh in total. This should mean better battery life but there's a few ifs and buts. For one, since the display is larger and of a higher resolution, it draws more power. Same applies for 90Hz mode. So if you use the display in 90Hz mode at 1440p fixed, you get a screen on time of around 5 to 5.5 five hours. And if you change the display mode to 60Hz, you get an hour SOT more. And if you change it to adaptive or 1080p, you get an hour further. So depending on the screen resolution and refresh rate you choose, you get anywhere between 5.5 to 7.5 of screen on time. And that's pretty impressive, especially if you consider the fact the 7 Pro has an additional thing to drain its battery. This is the front-facing pop-up camera. If you have enabled it like me for the face unlock, that means that you'll be using up battery for that too. Even if you say it's negligible compared to other activities and power consumed on the phone, it still does affect it, especially if you're like me who constantly uses the phone by locking and unlocking it. But battery life is not really a major concern on this device, even otherwise, especially since you get the really fast 30 watt warp charger that debuted with the OnePlus McLaren edition. You get almost 60% of charge in 30 minutes and it charges the phone fully from 15% in just about an hour. It's also backward compatible so you get fast charging via the dash charger if you have any lying about which is still better than most of the other chargers on the market. Gone are the days of flagship killers and the OnePlus 7 Pro is a flagship in almost every ride. In terms of performance, in terms of screen, in terms of battery life, in terms of gaming etc. It's very much right up there with every other flagship if not better. It still doesn't have an IP rating and there still isn't any wireless charging, let alone reverse wireless charging and that's one thing that separates the 7 Pro from other premium devices that it now finds itself against. The lack of an IP rating is more of an engineering hurdle in my opinion and not extra cost since I feel they could have easily used the money they used for Netflix and Nat Geo partnerships to get an IP rating. But those can still be forgiven in my opinion. One thing I can't forgive is the subpar camera performance. If you can live with these three shortcomings, then there's nothing else like this device. But if you can't, get yourself a P30 Pro or S10 Plus. Thanks for watching. Please do hit the subscribe button if you like this video. See you again in the next one.